Hey folks, welcome back to another physics uh, power up lesson. And today we're looking at potential dividers. Okay, so uh, let's get started. Okay, so the prior knowledge for this is use appropriate relationships to solve problems involving potential difference or voltage, current, and resistance. Now, a wee point here is this potential difference is really the proper name for voltage. Okay, so I will try and use this more rather than voltage. And sometimes we write this as P dot D or call it PD. So don't get confused if you hear the word potential difference or PD. I really mean I'm talking about voltage. So the equations we're going to focus on today are this one here, which is in your equation sheet. And remember, this is specifically for voltage dividers. And this one here, which is the same equation, but we swapped V2 for V1. R2 for R1, and remember they don't uh, include these, uh, the second equation in the relationship sheet. The other equation we're also going to use is this one here, which is one that I've not focused on a lot in class, um, partly because it doesn't come up very often. I tend to think this equation here is more important. However, if there are some problems where you really do need to use this one to solve the problem because it's easier, it's quicker. Um, so I'm going to spend a bit of time on this one here. The other bit of prior knowledge that I want you to, to know is the following, is the bigger the resistance, the bigger the potential difference. This is really just to help you to figure out if you've got the right answer or not. This is more important when we look later on in another PUP lesson about um, control circuits. So that's the ones to do with your MOSFETs, NPN transistors, your thermistors and LDRs, etc. And the final one, which I hope you all remember, is your series circuit rules where voltage splits up, or if you add the individual voltage in a circuit, this should always equal to the supply voltage. So make sure you are familiar with all those bits and pieces of prior knowledge, and then let's look at some work examples. So example one, given the potential divider has a potential difference of 12 volts across it, with R1 is 100 ohms and R2 is 250 ohms, calculate the potential difference across R2. So, pause the video, have a go of it if you're confident of what to do. If not, I will take you through the solutions. Now, before I get you through the solutions, a few things I want to just point out. Um, remember, with voltage dividers, sometimes they're drawn with a line at the top here and at the bottom and you, they tell you what the voltage is. So for example, they would tell you there's 12 volts here and there is zero volts here, okay? So don't get confused by that. And the idea is, is that off the screen, you would actually have your power supply drawn in. So that's the first thing. The second thing you've got to realize is that a potential divider is really just two resistors in series. Because you think about it, if this was a current coming along here, it would travel along the wire, it would go through the first resistor and then through the wire and then through the second resistor, so it must be in series. And that's why we had that series circuit rules for voltages. So that's the two things I want you to note about this and it will help you to understand the physics a lot better. So how do you do the calculation? Well, hopefully you know it's a good old classic uh, KFC. So uh, let's look at the solution here. So first of all, we write down what we've got. We then write down the equation we're using. We sub it into our equation. And then now um, I'm going to jump straight to the answer, which is 8.57. And then I've rounded that to one decimal place. Now, before, we, uh, before you try this yourself, be careful when you enter this into your calculator. Make sure you are putting these brackets in because I know sometimes the way you enter this into your calculator, you make silly mistakes, and that means you don't get the right answer. So make sure you get the same answer as me when you put your, your numbers into the calculator. If you don't, just check you're putting things in properly. You may even have to put an extra set of brackets for this bit here, or you could just do it in your head, because 100 plus 250 is 350, so you could just enter that in instead of putting the sum inside there. OK, as always, we want you to check for understanding. So here's an example two. Pause the video, have a wee go of it yourself and see how you do. I'll take you through the solutions in the next slide. 
So hopefully, folks, again, you've done your KFC, you've written down your equation, you plug in your numbers, and you've plugged it into your calculator correctly, and you get the answer 6.82 or 6.8 volts. If you didn't get this answer, I would ask you to just check it again. Make sure you're plugging things in properly. OK, so let's look at a slightly more uh, di different uh, example. So given the potential divider has a potential difference of 10 volts across it, with a fair wheel assist to set at 400 ohms and V2 is equal to 6 volts, calculate the value of R2. OK, so how do we do this one? Now, there is more than one way to do this uh, question. You can do this using Ohm's law. And if you can figure it out, brilliant, send a copy to me so I can check it's correct. I'm going to show you using um, that ratio equation that we had. So just bear with me and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So first of all, when we do this question here, we need to look at uh, what the values mean. So let's look at it in the next slide. So first of all, we know that we've got a potential difference of 10 volts. So um, that's 10 volts across both of this. We know that this one here is, we're going to call it R1, just so we know which one we're talking about. And this is 400 ohms. OK, so you may find it useful to draw out the circuit and label it. And we know that this one here is the one that we're trying to find. Now, we're given that V2 is 6 volts. And that's all the information we're given. OK, so our KFC technique, you will see, I'll rub that out for you, is PDF is, te, PD, sorry, is 10 volts, R1 is 400, R2 is unknown, and V2 is 6 volts. Now, the first thing we want to do is work out the other voltage. So remember, we're using our series circuit rules for voltages. And we get that V1 is 4 volts. And the reason we do that is because we can use this relationship, which tells you how the voltage splits up across the two resistors. Because once we have this and we know what V1 is, you can hopefully see it's dead easy. We just plug in our numbers. Now, again, I know some of you find the cross multiplying difficult. So what I would do is actually work out what this is first and then try and rearrange it. So here you can see 4 divided by 6 is 0 0.667. To get R2 by itself, I would hope you can see we simply swap these two in terms of the position. So then that becomes the following. R2 is 400 over 0 0.667, which is this. And if we round it up, then the answer is 600 ohms. And so that's how you do this one without using Ohm's law. As I said, you can do it using Ohm's law, but you would have to work out the current and that can be a slightly longer process. So doing this one, I would hope, is fairly straightforward. As always, I want you to check for your own understanding. So here's a second example. I want you to try this yourself. I'll take you through the answers in the next slide. So hopefully you did the usual. You wrote down what we had, your KFC technique. You then had to work out what V1 was using this equation. So hopefully you got 8 volts. Then we using this uh, equation here. Plug in the numbers. Again, I would work out the stuff on the left-hand side. So you know 2 is equal to 300 over R2. And again, I would hope you would realise you're just swapping these two around. And that gives you an answer of 150 ohms. If you didn't get the answer, Make sure you follow each steps and you know how to get there. OK, so just to summarise, we've used these two equations to work out the voltage across one resistor and, and a potential divider. We've used this uh, set of equations, this set of physics, to work out the resistance of one of the resistors and a potential divider. Obviously, we don't always have to work out R2. You may be asked to work out R1, but it's still the same technique. So that's potential dividers, folks.